Hello, my name is Hamera. I'm 21 years old and I've lived in Bristol for my whole life. I'm a university student. I'm in third year of law. So this is my dad. We share a lot of things in common. On weekends is like my family day. We love to go out for local walks and we love the outdoors. We're both practicing Muslims. Islam for me is a whole way of life. I frame my day around the five prayers, so I'm conscious about it all the time. Hi, my name is Shamo. I'm 22 years old and I've lived in Bristol for about 21 and a half years. I'm a filmmaker and photographer. I look quite obviously Muslim. <laughs> I, you know, I have a beard and the way, the way I dress occasionally, where I wear Islamic clothing and stuff, I can carry myself quite Muslim. So if it affects everything from how I treat people I meet, how I have an obligation to help the poor. I think Islamophobia is a very confused idea. In terms of whether I've actually experienced Islamophobia, I've experienced it online. It's pretty much rife, it's everywhere. But in terms of real life, where I live, Bristol is really multicultural, so I haven't really faced anything as of yet. I do feel that after certain events that happen locally or um, nationally or internationally, there is underlying tension. Going to the supermarket, I'm conscious of are people looking at me, and that happened after 9-11. The opportunity is now to dispel any stereotypes. Mainstream media plays a massive role in fueling Islamophobia. The media have some sort of propaganda in making ISIS and Muslims the same. Every morning, 9am, we get spoon-fed something negative about Islam, Muslims or immigrants. If you're only depending on what's in the news, on the tabloid newspapers, then and you're not reading anything else, that to me is um, quite toxic. One of the ways in which Islamophobia can be tackled is by integrating Muslims into Bristol society properly, and that is changing positively in Bristol. Places of worship are being built in a way where British values are kept, and so just down the road we have a Sahaba centre, which is the first mosque that I've been able to attend locally. A lot of mosques in Bristol don't accommodate for women or are too far for me to travel to. It's in a really nice Bristolian original building. A mosque doesn't have to have a dome and a minaret. But this is the only uh, place which is serving the community in Montpellier, uh, Cotton, Rudland, Clifton, and also the centre area. We've got an open door. Anybody can come in, see what we do, and what we were here for. I believe I'm a Bristolian. I'm part of the city. The foods you eat, the clothes you wear, you know, the things you believe in, that's to be shared with other people. Uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when he'd meet other people from different cities or villages, he'd learn their language and he'd try to communicate with them. He let the Christians pray in the mosque, he let the, and the Christians let the Muslims pray in the church, things like that. And I think those are things and lessons to be passed on towards all of us, whether you have a religion or you don't. Fine more than newspapers to actually get out a source of information. For example, talk to people in your community. It is sometimes disappointing to see that people believe everything they read in the news. However, I get a lot of confidence through non-Muslims and Muslims when they stand up against it on social media, when people have open dialogue and conversations. All creatures live under the same roof, which is the sky. So therefore, we have to live in peace with each other and, uh, and make it work.